the Church of Scientology. Some call it a manipulative cult. The controversial Church of Scientology. Eight fellow members of the Church of Scientology. Others say it's a well-established religion that helps people reach their potential. A lawyer for the Church of Scientology. All three of those Scientologists. Since its inception in the 1950s, the Church of Scientology has rarely been far from controversy. You don't know the history of psychiatry. I do. You are quoting the second half of the interview! And now it's under a attack again. Former senior insiders claim the church's current leader, David Miscavige, has created and encouraged a climate of violence within senior staff and was frequently violent himself. He viciously beat him, knocked him to the ground. Marty Rathburn, seen here in a Scientology magazine, was an inspector general, a top lieutenant to David Miscavige and oversaw the church's legal affairs. And then he knocked him down in his chair. Amy Scobie was a church executive who helped expand its outreach to celebrities. He just walked up and he hit me on the side of the head. Bruce Hines says he was a high-level auditor, a kind of therapeutic counselor. Hi, Wendy. Any messages? And supporting their allegations is Mike Rinder, who for many years was Scientology's main spokesman. He's now speaking out against the church, the same church he defended to ABC News in 1998. I think that there isn't a person on this earth that could not benefit from the teachings of Scientology. No, I'm not stopping no, here. You no. listen to me for a second. The church's current spokesman is Tommy Davis, seen here on the left in an infamous 2007 exchange with a BBC reporter. The beginning of that interview! We met with him at Scientology's New York church, where he granted us a rare interview. Is Mr. Miscavige violent towards Scientologists and has he been physically violent in the past? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. He is not. He is not and, and uh, it's not in his character, it's not in his nature and it is not the kind of person he is. One quality that has always set us apart is that we are unselfish. Yes, we have an utter monopoly on workable solutions but we share those solutions with anyone who reaches for them. This was David Miscavige in December 2007. It is my honor to present our first Freedom Medal of Valor to the most dedicated Scientologist I know. Presenting an award to the church's biggest star and his close friend, Tom Cruise. But the private face of Miscavige, according to these former Scientologists, is very different. Do you think David Miscavige should continue to be the figurehead of the Church of Scientology? No. Um, I'll just say it outright. I consider him to be a sociopath. I think the man's stark staring mad. Hello? My name is David Miscavige. Energetic and charismatic, David Miscavige quickly moved up the ranks after joining the church and became outright leader after Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard's death. Approximately two weeks ago, he completed all of his research as he had set out to do. Which he announced in this 1986 video. L. Ron Hubbard discarded the body he had used in this lifetime for 74 years, 10 months, and 11 days. Well, I was very much involved in, in, in litigation that was going on, on ongoing cases, but also intelligence side of it. Just a few years into his leadership, David Miscavige and Marty Rathburn were battling back against detractors. And after this devastating article in Time magazine, which referred to Scientology as a thriving cult of greed and power, they decided to go on the offensive. Miscavige agreed to appear live on this broadcast in 1992. It remains his only television interview. There's a little bit of a problem in getting people to talk critically about the Church of Scientology, because quite frankly, they're scared. Oh, no, 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 well, no, 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 let me explain something to you. The, the most disingenuous thing is that you have those people. Now, let's not give the American public the wrong impression. When you got to the studios, the Nightline studios, what was the atmosphere like? It was pretty uh, electric. If you really looked at the big picture of what's happening in Scientology, it isn't really controversial. But these former senior Scientologists say as Miscavige's leadership progressed, he became increasingly eccentric. He got his beagle, and he literally had somebody tailor a blue vest sweater for his beagle dog and made up epaulets 
the Sea Org ranks in the Sea Organization, and he had four stripes put on, captain, for the dog. And he would bring the dog in. If those guys didn't salute the dog, he would just viciously berate them and invalidate them. Hang on a sec. You're saying that he ordered the most senior ranks in the Church of Scientology to salute his dog? Yes, sir. He comes with his dog with a sweater with commander stripes. And the dog let out a little bark when she saw me. And uh, David Miscavige said, you know, you got something going on because she, she is detecting out ethics and you have something going on. I think what the dog was really saying is, you know, you look like the only halfway sane person. Can you help me out of this outfit? One former member says that Mr. Miscavige had a vest tailored for his dog with epaulets, similar to those that would be worn by Sea Org members, and he would order staffers to salute the dog. That is utterly, completely, totally ridiculous. Your own reaction was one of complete disbelief, I think it's fair totally, to say. Totally, because it's d unbelievable. And yet, there are consistencies between individuals who observe the dog dressed in a particular way mm -hmm. and a particular breed. Amy Scobie also confirms that Mr. Miscavige would bring his dog round dressed like a uniformed member. And if the dog barked, she says he would suggests that the individual towards whom the dog barked was behaving badly, had some kind of negative problem. Is that true? I don't know. I mean, maybe we should have the dog come in here and see if it barks at you, Martin. Marty Rathburn spent 27 years in the Church of Scientology. He says he personally saw its leader, David Miscavige, strike subordinates on numerous occasions, including senior colleague, Tom DeVocht. Miscavige walks in and goes, asks Tom some question, and there's the slightest lag in his response. Miscavige just takes off across the room in front of 80 people and get delivered a, just a beating to the guy. I mean, beat him up bad. Tom DeVocht, who left the church in 2005 after 28 years, recounted this event to ABC News, saying David Miscavige hit him, knocked him to the ground, and kicked him a number of times. According to Rathburn, Mike Rinder was also a victim of numerous attacks by Miscavige. I saw him attack him while he was sitting in a chair and hitting him upside the head and then, and, and then wrestling him around the neck and f throwing him to the ground. I saw at least a dozen times this happen. Amy Scobie says she also witnessed Miscavige attack Rinder grabbed him around the neck and was throttling, squeezing hard to the point where David's face was shaking and arms were shaking that he was squeezing so hard. Mike Rinder, who left the church in 2007, corroborated these specific incidents and told ABC News he was the victim of repeated acts of random violence at the hands of Miscavige. So I hear his voice booming out in the hallway. Bruce Hines says he himself was physically struck by Miscavige. He said, where is that mother And he just walked up and he hit me on the side of the head. It was a, he didn't have a closed fist, but it was an open hand. But it was, it definitely hurt and it definitely knocked me back. Why didn't you react by hitting back? That would mean um, I had just forfeited my hope for eternity. Your hope for eternity? Yeah, because it's drilled in over and over and over again. The Scientology has the only route to freedom. So he has the power over eternity? Yes. The church provided ABC with more than a dozen affidavits from current Scientologists, including some of the supposed victims, saying allegations that Miscavige struck subordinates are false and ridiculous. He is not a man of violence. Tommy Davis, Scientology's spokesman, says these former staffers are bitter and disgruntled liars.